Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. This is the first phase of planting my garden. It was April 29th in Northern Colorado when I started filming this. So it was too early to plant a lot of things, but it was the perfect time to plant a few perennials and hardy annuals. The foundation of these garden beds are the roses, so I need to get them planted before I put everything else in. This is a Zephyrine Druhan climbing rose. I planted it at an angle towards the trellis to encourage it to grow in that direction. It's a rose that dates back to the mid-1800s. It is virtually thornless, very vigorous, and gets enormous. I had one on the arbor in my last garden and I really loved it. I moved the fairy rose that I planted in the other bed last fall, as I think it will be a better fit in this bed. Once the roses were in place, it was easier to figure out where to put everything else. I placed some flagstone down the center of the new bed to make it easier to access the back of the bed. This bed is high enough that I need to use a step stool to get in and out of it. I tucked some perennials in. Some of these were given to me and others are ones that I had purchased. I had sweet mint and lemon balm plants that I wanted to keep contained. Using tin snips, I cut the bottom out of two large tubs. I placed the mint in one, but it looked like the lemon balm hadn't survived, so I ended up not using the second one. Against the shed, I planted delphinium and some hollyhock seeds. Since these won't bloom until next year, I planted some annuals from seed. Cosmos, Love in a Mist, as well as some Larkspur to make the beds really full this year. Then it was time to plant the hardy annuals. These were the things that could withstand cooler temperatures and light freezes such as alyssum, dusty miller, and some violas. I trimmed up the fairy rose I transplanted and then watered everything in well. Next I went to work on the larger bed. I planted another rose. This one is Windermere. It's a pale yellow David Austin rose. I also planted more hardy annuals in this bed and shifted a few plants around and planted some of the bigger perennials that I had. I was getting ready to leave for a trip so I wanted to have all these plants in the ground while the weather was still cool to give them a chance to get established. I also knew that they were going to survive better in the ground than in small pots since I would be gone for about a week. May 10th. When I got back from my trip, I decided to plant the tender annuals. A bit early for Colorado as it was still early May, but there was no freeze indicated in the 10 day forecast. The majority of these were petunias, but there were also annual vinca vines, lobelia, some nicotiana, as well as a few snapdragons. This is how it looked before I started planting. Everything I planted before I left was doing well, and I was pretty happy with how it looked. You can see that the dirt settled quite a lot on the back side of the new bed, so I've been gradually adding more soil and giving the plants a chance to grow up through it before adding more. A lot of the Cosmo and Hollyhock seeds that I planted were just starting to come up. I trimmed up the roses I planted in the fall and laid out all the annuals where I wanted them to go. I had petunias in white and a lavender purple, some sweet potato vine, African daisies, though I don't know the specific variety as they were unmarked. There's more Nicotiana and Snapdragons in there, and also some Lobelia. Once I got everything figured out, I started planting. I found with these raised beds, it's a lot easier on the back to sit on a stool while working. I worked my way around the beds pretty quickly once I knew where everything was going to go. I planted everything pretty close together in this bed since I knew that the perennials were going to be fairly small this year. I really wanted to fill that space up. Then I watered it in well and repeated the same process on the back bed. I 
I also had a few hyacinth and daffodil bulbs that I had forced inside in pots over the winter. I brought them out and planted them in the garden, figuring they would have a better chance of settling in by planting at this time of year rather than in the fall since they were already growing. Then I watered this bed in as well. May 14th. Time to take a look around the garden and see how it's shaping up. There have been a couple of squirrels hanging out in the front yard trees keeping me company. There's a pot of pansies looking really nice. The rest of these pots still need to be planted. Even after just a few days, everything was starting to fill out and looking really good. I was really happy with how this was growing. The primary annuals in the beds are wave petunias and white alyssum. There's also quite a few perennials. This Gora Lindheimeri, also known as Whirling Butterflies, is one of my favorite perennials. This plant was given to me and I was told it was a phlox, but it had a fuzzy leaf so I didn't think that was right. At this point I didn't really know what it was. This is Centranthus ruber, also known as Jupiter's Beard. The sweet mint has been growing quite well. I got the big blue pots planted again this year and they're looking really nice as well. In the rectangular planters I planted sweet peas, some dwarf snapdragons, and larkspur. Some of this was a little slow to come up and then by the time it did start coming up I forgot what I had planted. I love seeing all those little growing seedlings. I planted this chrysanthemum about four years ago and it keeps coming back. Here is another look at that beautiful Gara. You can see why it's called Whirling Butterflies in this picture. There are a few blossoms on the Windermere Rose coming. The sedum I planted last fall is doing really well. In fact, it's expanding. The perennial geranium I thought was lost has come back. This should be really beautiful next year. The feverfew plants are growing wonderfully. They will add a cloud of white blossoms in midsummer. The rhubarb is doing pretty well, but I do need to start preparing a final spot for it as there is not enough room for it in this bed. There are still a few bulbs poking new shoots out of the ground. I don't think they got great roots on them last fall because they got planted so late. Hopefully they will blossom this coming spring. The roses are settling in nicely. Overall, I'm pretty happy with where the garden is at this point. I'll be sure to post some videos throughout the summer and fall to share how it progresses. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you. Have a lovely day.